Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Well, hey, we got some green today, right? Look at this. XRP at almost 26 cents as I record this. Hey, I'll take it, considering it was recently down to, what, uh, 22 cents? Uh, somebody somebody wrote that it was at, like, 21 and a half cents on Coinbase just uh, within the last, I don't know, week, whatever whatever the hell it's been when we started to see all this price chaos here. So what what I want to run through in this, in this video here, very interesting stuff. I think you're really going to enjoy this. So uh, I've got this piece, and it's titled Bitcoin... A price screams buy as U.S. dollar and stocks rally. So I want to share what this particular analyst thinks in terms of the, the uh, direction of the entire asset class. I'm going to talk specifically about XRP also. And, um, you know, I always think in terms of Bitcoin price, uh, look, XRP is absolutely tethered to Bitcoin, even though it doesn't move in sync with it literally down to the second, the minute, the hour, of the day, not all the time. But it is absolutely, move, absolutely moving in tandem, so I do like watching, as a result, where Bitcoin's heading. Check this out. You will find this fascinating as well. This, this piece is titled, You Could Have Bought Bitcoin at $13 and Still Lost Money. Here's how. That piece is very fascinating, and I think the concept behind it applies to XRP, which is why I really want to share this with you. I'm not sure that a lot enough people out there understand. I'm sure there's people listening to that understand the concept that I'm going to explain within this article. But uh, it's, it's essentially, given that uh, the, the biggest price swings only happen a select number of times in any given year, or if it's the stock market, maybe not even in a year, you better make sure you have exposure when, uh, when the good stuff starts happening and people start FOMOing in. And then uh, the last piece I'm going to cover in this video, I just found quite genuinely fascinating. It's titled Bitcoin Replay, Crypto Insider Unearths 1995 Classic Bash of the Internet. So just as there are uh, people out in the world today, many articulate, many, many respected, stating that cryptocurrencies will eventually go away, there were people that were saying the same damn crap about the Internet. So <laughs> I thought it would be fun to kind of run through that. But uh, before we get going, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, well, thank you for stopping by, my friend. It's good to see you here. This is an XRP-centric channel. So, very quick recap, market uh, market cap for the crypto asset class, 219 billion, Bitcoin's at 8,230, and XRP, as I record this, 25.6 cents, and I love looking at this chart. Um, and this is just another perfect opportunity to explain uh, visually how every single of one of the top 10 coins, they're at Tether, of course, uh, every, every single one of the top 10 coins is moving in lockstep. Look at this, as Bitcoin leads the market. And again, and it's not going to be the case every day that the charts will look exactly the same, but a lot of the time, they absolutely do, especially when Bitcoin decides that it wants to go tank, right? I'm Bitcoin, I'm going to go jump off a cliff, Wee, yep, that's, and then all the, the, the entire asset class crumbles with it, almost 100% of the time, right? Um, and so the, alt, the, the high within the, of XRP within the last 24 hours, it got up to 26.02 cents. And you can see, I do like seeing this. Hey, look, look, look at the chart right here. It looks like one stair step, right? So I, whatever, I will take it. Here's what a chart analyst on Cointelegraph has to say about uh, XRP price action here. XRP has risen sharply above 24.508 cents. This is a positive sign as it shows... Uh, buying at lower levels and indicates that the recent breakdown was a bear trap. The pullback might face some resistance at the moving averages and, and above it at 27.795 cents. Uh, the traders can watch the next dip and buy if it does not break below 24.508 cents. Uh, that will signal a bottom formation. If the bulls can push the price above 27.795 cents, the XRP slash USD pair can quickly rally to 34.229 cents. That's quite bullish indeed. Conversely, if the pair turns down from current levels and plunges below 22 cents, the, the downtrend will resume. The next support at the downside is at 19 cents. However, we give it a low probability of occurring. Okay, so there you go. There's there's the short-term uh, price prediction from, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, Rakesh Oop, a day on, on Coin Telegraph. So we will see what comes to pass. But I think it has a lot more to do with Bitcoin. I'll tell you what, if, if, if XRP ever ends, ends up back in the teens, it's going to be because Bitcoin tanked dramatically and probably sooner than that. Not that I'm predicting that's going to happen. I'm just, I'm just saying if, if it were to. That, that's probably like the only reason it would happen. Now check out this piece. Bitcoin BTC price screams buy as U.S. dollar and stocks rally. 
All's well that ends well. The U.S. stock market seemed to have followed the message in spirit as it started the week and ended the month day today on a green note. And speaking of green, greenback, the U.S. dollar hit its highest level since 2017. Bitcoin, $8,188.19. Uh, down 0.7%, it says, as of the time of this writing, anyway. Uh, markets haven't stayed behind either as Bitcoin rose 4% in the last... Uh, 24 hours. Okay, um, As reported by the Financial Times, the greenback rose 0.4% to 99.46 uh, on the dollar index on Monday. This is supposedly its highest climb since 2017 in May. Along with this, the U.S. dollar is well on its way to record a solid quarter performance since Q2 of 2018. The same narrative played out in U.S. stock markets, too, as the S&P 500 NASDAQ composite gained 0.3% and 0.4%, respectively, on the last day of the trading month. Both prominent market indices ended up registering monthly gains of 1.6% and 0.1%, respectively. It seems renewed fears of an escalation in the U.S.-China trade war didn't deter the confidence of traders at all. So then they have a subheading here. And it says, Bitcoin price following U.S. and global stock market movements, with a question mark at the end, hence my upward inflection. For Fundstrat co-founder Thomas Lee, the Bitcoin and U.S. stock markets are pretty much correlated. On September 25th, Bitcoinist covered his stance on the falling Bitcoin price as he sought to quell fears of an, another upcoming uh, bear market. And here's a quote, it's overbought and needs to see weaker sentiment. Our Bitcoin misery index has been saying this since July, and it's stuck time until uh, S&P 500 ends this trendless macro period. So at least summarized. The downturn in Bitcoin followed the risk-off sell-off in equities, he continued in a further tweet. This, he added, reinforces our unpopular opinion Bitcoin does not do well in a trendless macro, trendless macro environment. Right? And I, I did cover that uh, when that news came out, actually. So check us out. It goes further. It seems the correlation is happening as both Bitcoin and the U.S. stock markets have looked up in a swift denial to an impending political turmoil. In the backdrop of this argument, since Bitcoin is a globally traded asset, it is only fair to compare its rally to equity markets gains in other geographies as well. And so that's why I, I find this, this interesting, the, the direction in which everything's act actually moving. So is there something indeed to what uh, Thomas Lee says? Well, peace continues here. Stock 600, Europe's benchmark stock index, posted a 0.4% gain today with a monthly gain of 3.3% in September. This is the first time the market moved up in three months since June this year. Hong Kong's Hang Seng also wasn't left behind as the index lighted up today with 0.5% uh, gain. And then uh, there's a subset here. BTC might put uh, in a perfect buy signal. Okay, According to an experienced global macro investor and founder of DTAP Capital, Dan Tapiero, a rare Bitcoin buy signal occurred at the $3,600 price mark in January this year following which the market rallied by a humongous 400% with Bitcoin topping out at $14,000. Something similar, by signal flash, is about to happen today, and it's important to watch out for the 5 p.m. close on Bitcoin price charts for absolute confirmation here. And um, here's the tweet. Bitcoin might put in a uh, perfected TD9 buy signal today. Last time I pointed out... Uh, it disappeared on close, thanks to at Tommy Thornton for catching. Very important to watch 5 p.m. close to confirm. Rare buy signal last at 3600 uh, January 19th. It came right before large multi-month 400% rally. So maybe it's a major indicator, which is why I wanted to report on this here. Um, so do you think the price is moving out of the rut, or is the current rally nothing more than a dead cat bounce? So, uh, look, and again, if, if you listen to me more than once, you've probably heard me say it before, I do not make price predictions because I'd probably just be wrong. I'd be pulling numbers completely out of thin air and I think it would be disingenuous. But I always like to talk, uh, cover data from those that uh, think they have an idea of which direction this is all going. And I'm telling you, XRP ain't done, Bitcoin ain't done. I don't know exactly what the timeline's going to look like, but the all-time high of $3.92 for XRP will not stand, not forever. It's going to far surpass that eventually, but it's not surprising me, i got to say, even me not being a chart on this, I must, I must say I'm not remotely surprised 
that given the tremendous run up in 2017 of the, of the crypto asset class and the, the the major bear market, I mean, it's the, the largest dollar collapse of the asset class in history. It's not surprising to me that uh, we we haven't seen uh, a, an additional rally beyond what, what has already happened in in, uh, in 2019, especially for altcoins. I know we're waiting on that, but it's just, we'll just see if history repeats itself because this it, it tell you what if XRP and uh, other altcoins don't have their their alt season at some point, it'll be the first time ever. Because uh, like the last five times it, it happened, which I highlighted on on the channel in a recent video, uh, when you get this much of a Bitcoin dominance, I don't know what it's at today. I didn't check. It's probably around seventy percent or something. But uh, actually, it's probably on the screen here. But uh, the you know, last time, uh, yeah, sixty-seven point two four percent Bitcoin dominance. You know, every last time it, it that was the case, it altcoins had a run. I just it doesn't mean it's going to happen. But if history is any indicator, and it very well may be, it's just a matter of time. And I am very patient. All right, now check out this piece. You could have bought Bitcoin at thirteen dollars and still lost money. Here's how. You'd have to be really bad, right? Don't, isn't that the, that's a, like the first thought when I saw that headline? I was like, you'd have to be really stupid to have lost money buying Bitcoin at thirteen dollars, like still lost money. But it, it, check this out: a sobering thought for those bemoaning losses from last week's Bitcoin price drop. You could have bought Bitcoin in 2013 at thirteen dollars and still lost money and lots of it. Such is the importance of the rule of ten best days, which states that excluding the ten best days each year. Bitcoin has fallen 25% annually since 2013. Do you hear that? Excluding the 10 best days, Bitcoin's in decline for the last six years. Now, of course, it's not in decline because, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, right at the outset, uh, those, those few days where you have tremendous activity, that's where the real gains are made. And that's why if you believe in the asset class, if you believe in XRP, from my perspective, it makes sense to just make sure you have exposure and not let the short-term price volatility get to you emotionally. Not, you know, don't let it cause you to panic sell. And that's, again, not financial advice. I'm just sharing what I personally feel with this. So anyway, uh, we were reminded of the rule of 10 best days by Thomas Lee of Fundstrat over the weekend, who sought to calm anybody at risk of panic trading. Lee described the rule as Fundstrat rule number six explaining, X 10 best days, Bitcoin down 25% per year. All the gains come in 10 days. Are you that good at trading? And, and I got to thank you so much for, like, this is exactly why I'm never going to be a trader. You know, I'm not going to try and time the market. It's, it's just to me, it sounds stupid. Now, there's probably somebody out there that's listening that's actually good at it. Okay, kudos to you. Fine, you know, I'm, this is not targeted you. But I'm just saying for the average person, maybe trading is a freaking horrendous idea and just don't freaking do it. If you have confidence in the asset class, just hold and hold and hold and hold, right? To me, that makes a lot more sense. Anyway. And the piece continues, of course, this doesn't mean that Bitcoin has lost money every year if we discount the 10 best days. In the bull market of 2017, there were impressive returns of 232% during those um, other 355 days. But this is next to an unprecedented 1,136% return over the, the 10 best days. Right? On the whole, the trading period outside of those 10 best days has been substantial annual losses. Picking exactly those days would seem to be an almost impossible task for even an experienced trader. Investor and founder of DTAP Capital, Dan Tapiero, had a different take on the implications of the rule, namely that an investor could have bought Bitcoin at $13 in January 2013 and still lost money. If the investor had missed just those best 10 days of performance each year, as unlikely as that would be, then the asset would have lost the vast majority of its value. You'd have to be the worst trader on the planet, though. <laughs> anyway, um, that might only seem upsetting if you'd bought a lot more than one Bitcoin at $13. However, even with one Bitcoin, you'd have missed out on around $8,000 of returns. The conclusion would seem that to be as strategy goes, hodling would seem to be a safer bet than trading. Uh, and, uh, and it writes, oh, and of that, of course, the, the daily price doesn't matter, as even during bull runs, we are likely to see days of heavy, heavy losses. And truer words have never been spoken. I'm totally on board for this. So with, with us as XRP holders, just beware of this. You never know. I mean, there have been very long periods of relative uh, XRP price flatness. Um, you know, and, and so conceptually, you know, I know this this specific article while while they're they're highlighting Bitcoin. What I wanted to state is that conceptually, the, the, the thought the, the the understanding behind this 
it is it is absolutely true with XRP. You know, it, it doesn't have to be literally ten days, but just conceptually understand this is why it's a bad idea to sell. It's the same thing. Same thing is absolutely true as it pertains to the stock market as well. So just be aware of that. And so if you're going to trade or if you're going to buy or you're going to sell, just know uh, it might be kind of risky. Anyway, uh, daily hodl. Bitcoin Replay Crypto Insider on Earth's 1995 Classic Bash of the Internet. Co-founder of crypto platform Earn and former chief tech, uh, technical officer of Coinbase, uh, Balaj Srin- I'm, I'm not even going to try it. I'm, I, not today. Not today. I don't know how to say that. I'm not even going to try it. Anyway, so that person is highlighting how revolutionary technologies that meet resistance don't always fade away. Despite articulate detractors, the internet took years to become an integral part of society, reshaping the backbone of entire industries, housing data, connecting workers, and providing complex infrastructure for multinational systems. Uh, And then that guy whose name I'm not even going to attempt, a Bitcoin supporter and angel investor, posted a throwback hype alert essay written by author and astronomer Clifford Stoll in 1995. Published by Newsweek, the essay entitled The Internet... Bah! With an exclamation point. Chronicles the technology's long list of dashed hopes and promises at that time. And there it is on the screen there. (laughs) Anyway, uh, Stoll explains in his essay, here's the quote, Baloney, do our computer pundits lack all common sense? The truth in sick no online database will replace your daily newspaper. No CD-ROM can take the place of a competent teacher. And no computer network will change the way government works. I'm glad I'm not this guy. Uh, we're, we're promised instant catalog shopping. Just point and click for great deals. We'll order airline tickets over the network. Make restaurant reservations and negotiate sales contracts. Stores will become obsolete. So how come my local mall does more business in an afternoon than the entire internet handles in a month? Even if there were a trustworthy way to send money over the internet, which there isn't, the network is missing a most essential ingredient of capitalism. Salespeople. <laughs> oh my god. Every single one of those things ended up happening, right? Everything came to pass that he said wasn't gonna, like wasn't there. It just, it, it was, with the, with the, the indication being, of course, that it was never going to happen anyway. So uh, Jeff Bezos founded Amazon in 1994. The company took a considerable amount of time before it transformed multiple industries. In addition to the retail apocalypse, with malls turning into ghost towns, the next 25 years would see several retail giants collapse. And here you got physical store shutdowns. Uh, Tower Records, 2006. Sharper Image, 2008. Blockbuster, 2013. Toys R Us, 2018. Payless Shoe Source, 2019. I don't think I knew that one. That one just had just happened. Well, it is 2019. Uh, Jim Bree, 2019. Yeah, times are changing. Right in June, the guy whose name I can't pronounce notes that uh, time is a key ingredient for technological traction, paving a long road to sweeping new procedures that can revamp society both locally and globally. Here's a quote. It'll take a long it'll take a while, but the entire tech industry will ultimately be rebuilt on public blockchains. Yep. Incorporation funding, sending slash receiving payments, employee equity, user incentives, encrypted messaging, identity, accounting, MA, governance. Uh, all can be automated with crypto. Indeed, you don't need the middleman. And to see, de- decentralization can make sense in, in many ways. Now, with a lot of that, you frankly wouldn't need a native digital asset associated with ne- necessarily, but uh, you can certainly settle much quicker utilizing cryptocurrency. And what uh, what do you think is being positioned uh, for that use case? Anyway, um, he tweeted a, a recent uh, follow-up statement about PayPal, uh, I'm sorry, payments giant PayPal, founded in 1998, and tech accelerator Y Combinator, YC, founded in 2005, a full decade after Stoll penned his article. YC has now funded over 2,000 companies, including many that have transformed entire industries. And there's a quote, the PayPal, Mafia, and YC were once on the outskirts of the tech industry. Over time, they became the mainstream. The same is gradually happening to crypto. It will become the core of the industry over time. PayPal Mafia went on to found LinkedIn, Yelp, <clears throat> Tesla, SpaceX, YouTube, uh, Palantir, FF, etc. YC Seed invested in Airbnb, Dropbox, Stripe, Coinbase, etc. And Theo Graham Hoffman must give essays, books, speeches. So create billions in value, then explain how you did it. Right? So cool stuff there. So look, it's not going away. That's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.